Hey everybody, wanted to do a quick video today about the Apple Vision Pro. This is completely separate from anything that I've ever talked about on uh, YouTube before. It has nothing to do with web design. Well, it, it might actually, who knows? Um, but it's something I'm really excited about and I wanted to share it with you and I wanted to tell you why I'm excited about it. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Apple made an announcement about six months ago that they were working on this Vision Pro product. And today they made an announcement with the release date and a pre-order date. Looking at this thing, it looks an awful lot like a VR headset, something like the MetaQuest or the Vive or anything like that, but Apple's really positioning it a little bit differently. Instead of focusing on gaming, they're really focusing on productivity, and they're being really careful in all their marketing material not to call this VR. They're calling it spatial computing. So why am I excited about this? A couple reasons, actually. Um, it, most of you probably don't know this, but uh, back in the late 90s, I actually went to school uh, to learn how to do 3D modeling and animation and video effects and things like that. So I've got a love for this stuff in my heart somewhere. But then in 2023, I picked up a couple XR projects that landed in my lap out of the blue. And it really reignited an interest in this for me, especially when I saw how far the technology has become. And I started to think about some of the use cases for uh, businesses outside of, you know, things like industrial and medical and, you know, huge, huge enterprises that have been using, you know, this technology for years. And then the gaming community that's also been kind of dabbling in it for years. But I started to really look at it and think about how this might work for a real business. And uh, it just got my brain working a little bit and, and thinking about the fact that, you know what, this actually could become a reality sometime in the next three to five years. And then looking at what Apple's doing here and the way that they tend to push technology forward and into the uh, hands of the masses, um, it's just, it's a really exciting time for this stuff. Look at the iPhone, for example. You know, back in what, 2006, seven, people generally weren't using smartphones unless it was like a Blackberry or, you know, a, a Windows handheld. And my wife made fun of me like you wouldn't believe uh, for standing in line to get the first iPhone. You know, fast forward to now and everybody has this thing in their pocket. You know, people are using smartphones to uh, view the internet more than desktop computers these days. So yeah, you know, Apple has a way of taking something that already exists, refining it and making it so that it has mass appeal. So let's just take a, a quick look at this page um, before I start rambling even more. So like I said, uh, this thing's gonna be available for pre-order starting on the 19th, uh, January 19th, 2024, and it's gonna be available at uh, February 2nd, 2024. They've got some pretty neat renders here. The big standout feature seems to be this external display that shows a picture of your eyes. And I think the reason that they're doing this is so that you don't feel quite so isolated and that people around you when you're using this thing have some sense of, you know, what your eyes are doing. You know, one of the big challenges that they're trying to solve is uh, the fact that when you have this headset on, you are isolated from the outside world and they're trying to make this more of a social experience. Again, I talked about the fact that they are avoiding the term VR uh, because that has some really negative connotations. People uh, think of VR in terms of uh, gaming these days. They think about it in terms of all the janky stuff that, that people have dealt with for the last eight years or so that this has been around. Um, and they're using the term spatial computing, uh, which I think is really smart. Apple's great at branding. So, you know, rebranding this as spatial computing is a really smart move. Looking at this website, a lot of the stuff that they're doing right now, they're taking what we do in 2D on the iPad, on the iPhone, and they're just bringing this into a 3D space. I think I read someplace that they're actually going to allow you to use almost every uh, iPad app inside this headset, which is a really interesting concept. Um, and, and there's no reason why it wouldn't work, really. This thing's also going to have an M2 processor in it. We'll probably get to that when I scroll down. Um, so it's really gonna be meant as almost a standalone computing device. Uh, and, and in some ways, I, I wonder whether it's going to replace a laptop or whether it could potentially replace a laptop. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm actually interested in is uh, using something like this to potentially replace or augment my monitors. I've got a, a huge monitor right now that's kind of on the fritz. Um, and I, I've actually been using my MetaQuest along with a product called Immersed to have multiple displays and it's been fantastic. It's also great when I've been traveling, I can put this headset on and I've got multiple monitors around me. I'm not uh, locked into just doing, you know, this tiny little laptop screen. I can actually work on, you know, huge uh, screens if I want to, multiple screens if I want to, uh, just by putting a headset on. So it makes me wonder whether something like this would be possible with the Vision Pro, who knows? The fact that they're really focusing on hand control is really interesting. Um, you know, having used the MetaQuest and a few others, uh, they always have uh, hand controllers, which I like. Um, and, and maybe I like them because hand control is relatively new in, in the world of uh, VR and XR. Um, and it sort of works like crap. Um, 
but the fact that the Vision Pro has eye tracking built in and then it's going to have hand control built in. Uh, you know, if they've made this work in a way that is seamless and not janky, uh, I think it's going to be a game changer for a lot of things. Um, I am disappointed, though, that they're not offering an option of controllers. You know, maybe they'll have a third party thing. Maybe they'll have an add on product. I'm not sure, um, because some things do lend themselves better to a controller interface than a hand interface. Uh, so we'll just have to see how all that plays out. You know, here we're looking at, uh, you know, somebody viewing a movie as kind of a floating screen in the air. And this is something that you can get with all sorts of products on the market right now, like the uh, the X-Real glasses. Even like a, a MetaQuest lets you uh, watch movies and things like that sort of floating in augmented reality space. The big difference here, I think, is the fact that uh, the augmented reality cameras uh, seem to be better on the Vision Pro than they are on most other headsets. So you will hopefully be able to see your environment um, without it looking like garbage and uh, you know really feel like you've got this screen floating in the air in front of you. That they're bringing this into Apple Vision Pro, I think is a smart move and it'll help bring this stuff into people's homes where it isn't before. This is a great design. Um, I think it's interesting that they don't have a head strap up at the top. So the fact that it's going to be, you know, kind of stuck to the front and the back makes me wonder just how comfortable it's going to be. Although, you know, this is Apple. So I, I'm sure that they have tested this 12 ways to Sunday and they've really thought about the uh, user experience here and what it feels like. And here we go. I talked about before how, um, you know, I could potentially use this as a second monitor. And this uh, really looks like what they are showing here. Um, they're showing how you can use those desktop apps and uh, tablet apps right there inside the Vision Pro. I think this is a fantastic use case. This is kind of neat. It's an interesting marketing gimmick. Um, you know, you can use uh, certain iPhones to uh, create spatial video, really 3D video, and then view it inside of there. And it's one of those things if you've never used any type of uh, XR headset, uh, it is a little bit of a wow moment. Uh, when the first time that you watch a 3D video in a true headset, not the kind of uh, janky 3D that you see in the movie theater. Whether this is a selling point, I'm going to say probably not, um, but it's a pretty good marketing point. This is where I really think it's going to start benefiting some business is um, for uh, remote collaboration. And this is actually how I'm using it with some of my clients right now. We all have Zoom fatigue. You know, sitting there staring at the grid of people makes it really hard to collaborate on things. And it's even harder when you've got some people that are uh, with each other physically and some people that are just on this screen on a TV somewhere. Um, you know, Using something like this, uh, it really does feel like you're in the same room. And it's something that you can't describe well if you haven't done it, if you haven't used it. Um, a, a description could never cover it, but actually sitting there in a virtual room with somebody, uh, it, it truly does feel uh, a whole lot different and it makes it feel like you're right there with a the person. Uh, the fact that you can throw stuff up on a virtual screen, um, and have virtual whiteboards and all that, uh, just makes it that much more uh, compelling. Um, you know, what they're showing here looks like a, uh, kind of a generic FaceTime, a generic, you know, meeting, uh, with somebody, but the way that we're using it right now, we're actually using it with certain apps where they can come in and, uh, my clients are, uh, reviewing technical drawings and, you know, 3d CAD things and exploding stuff and, you know, actively annotating things in 3d space. And these are people that are literally across the world from each other. And, you know, they're working in the same room with, you know, these physical 3d objects and it is just mind-blowing how they're getting stuff done without you know wasting uh, days worth of time traveling back and forth so you know what they're showing here uh, is great for a demo um, and i really look forward to seeing what people come up with in the business world because i think this is really what's going to help drive it into business and here we go um, if you've used something like the MetaQuest, you know how uh, half-assed the operating system is the only thing that's saving uh, that product frankly is the fact that they've got a ton of games on there and people like to play games um, you know having an ios type uh, operating system i think is going to make a big big difference going to make this much more usable i don't like the fact that it's a closed ecosystem and a walled garden uh, but you know frankly apple knows what they're doing and they do it pretty darn well this thing's going to have incredible screens i'm really looking forward to that you know, even looking at uh, the MetaQuest 3, which has got a pretty darn good screen, um, this looks like it's just going to blow it out of the water. Uh, another one to uh, really keep an eye on is this visor product from a company called Immersed. 
um, which it, it's not really competing with the Apple Vision Pro, but it has very similar uh, visual specs. And again, this one's really meant to be uh, very productivity focused. Um, I've got a pre-order in for this. I'd love to see uh, what it looks like when it comes out. Um, it's a much smaller uh, glasses sized uh, device. Um, it's not going to have the same capabilities as the Apple Vision Pro. Um, but again, you know, looking at this, uh, looking at the fact that Qualcomm and Google and Samsung are getting back into this market, uh, just makes me really stop and think about um, the fact that this is something that's coming down uh, the pipe. How is it going to be used uh, by businesses? How is it going to be used by consumers? Is it going to continue being a niche thing? Who the hell knows? Uh, but I don't think I can afford to ignore it. We're talking again about the eye tracking. This is going to be really key to a lot of things because that eye tracking is going to let you precisely select stuff. Whereas right now you've got to use controllers and some hand motions to select things. So the eye tracking is a big deal. So that's it for the Apple Vision Pro. This is one of those technologies where I'm not quite sure where it's going to go, but I also think we can't ignore it, especially uh, for those of us who are web designers. We have got clients, we have our businesses, and uh, this is something that I think is going to somehow impact us. I'm just not quite sure what. Um, I'm looking at things like uh, Microsoft Mesh, which is uh, their meeting collaboration space uh, that integrates with Microsoft Teams. And I actually saw an interesting uh, presentation from them the other day, how they are bringing uh, web content into their Microsoft Mesh world. So I definitely see some sort of, uh, I hate to use the word synergy, but it is, it's a synergy between what we're doing with websites and what's happening here in the AR space. And uh, I think it's definitely worth checking out. Is it worth spending uh, $3,500 on for the average person that's not using it for clients? Mm, probably not. I think right now the price point and the technology is meant for developers. It's meant for people who are uh, going to be building solutions on this so that when the next uh, revision or two comes out and it starts to uh, gain more traction, um, they'll be in a better place and a place where they can make a very compelling business case to sell it to mass market. If you can't tell, this is a topic that I'm pretty passionate about, and I really love the business side of XR. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is creating a separate YouTube channel just to talk about this kind of stuff, to look at some of the apps that are already available, to look at how businesses are using XR. I'm not talking about the big enterprises. I'm not talking about the you know $15,000 headsets or the stuff that people, you know, construction workers are using with the, the tiny little uh, you know augmented reality. I'm talking about the stuff that's going to be interesting and usable to uh, people like us, people like our customers who are going to be using this for a day to day work. Um, same thing, not really focused on gaming. Um, although I like to play games, I, I don't think that's really what's going to push this forward. So I'm really going to be focusing on uh, the business and productivity uses of AR. And uh, I'll drop a link in the uh, description below with a, with a link to that channel. So you can subscribe if this is something that you're interested in. And I will try, uh, unless I hear otherwise, unless I hear from you guys saying you really are interested in this stuff, I'll try not to uh, put too much of it here on this channel. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.